The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. Something was pegged today. A notice is going out to the entire world. Before I tell you what that is, let me explain to you guys all things uh, I'm going to have to say how they would theoretically work if they were to be effective right before uh, some sort of crisis or event that nobody has ever undergone before. If we were all people in power and we have various folks embedded in all nations, we could never contact them directly and give direct statements because it would be important for those people to be a part of whatever they are. For example, if, a, if an agent was in Florida, it'd be important for that agent to be a Floridian all through and through, which means they could have no trail of any conversation with any government entity to be wholly and fully accepted by Florida. They would have to be able to be uh, trackable and that would only lead a person to believe that they are in fact a civilian, not an agent. So how would you speak to agents who are embedded all over the earth or people of various positions? In this case, suppose there are groups within all these uh, corporations and in these groups they have these group meetings now nobody knows that these people are part of these groups and it's important that the populace never know that they are a part of these groups all a person would know is that that's the president of uh, you know apple or that's the ceo of at&t or something of that nature and they wouldn't know what affiliation they have to certain societies certain groups so how would they communicate? They could not use electronic media. They could never do anything directly because if it were ever uh, traced or somebody made a mistake, it would blow the cover off the entire thing and thus it would not work. So how would you communicate with various members all over the world without ever sending a piece of mail, a text, a phone call or anything? How would you do that? You do that through something called a key phrase. Now, a key phrase in this case would be a term utilized that is consistent throughout commercials, throughout movies, whatever the case is. There'll be a key phrase. This key phrase will be quite direct. It'll be incorporated into a lot of things, but very plain. Right? Believe it or not, nobody wants to set up and figure out uh, with their Dakota ring what somebody else is saying. Like, it doesn't work that way. You'd be surprised how simple things are. When you send out a key phrase, no one can track that key phrase to any individual. They can't do it because everybody is listening or everybody can potentially listen. So you can't identify a person by who's listening because everybody sees. It. So if they embed something in a commercial, it would, for those who understand the key phrase, it would then trigger them to say, hey, we're, we're at this moment. So you know what to do. In our scenario, I'm going to call it our scenario. On April 19th, 2024, it's the second day of confirmation in our scenario, in our world. I'm wrapping this conversation inside of our scenario. So in our scenario, there are power groups of power and industry are quite specific. One of the most powerful groups in any government. So you have all these electric companies and gas companies and water companies, right? You have all those critical infrastructure companies. That'd be your gas, water, you know, all those different things. So you, in our proposed world, key phrases would be utilized in commercials of companies who never had a commercial before. So, for example, suppose you see a commercial for a company you're very familiar with, but that company never had an advertisement in the last 20 years. All of a sudden, they have an advertisement. They speak with that advertisement and you notice a phrase that's also used in another commercial from another utility that has not advertised in about 20 years. They use the exact same key phrase. Then you see some another commercial from another utility or service connected with critical infrastructure and they utilize the same key phrase. Well, at that point, that's a confirm. That'd be confirmation. If any of you ever saw that, your ears would go up, right? Your antenna would go up. You say, well, that's odd. Why would they have this commercial? They're not asking for money. 
you know, they're not asking for anything. It's almost like they solely have that commercial to get that key phrase out in a commercial. That's it. In our scenario, from April 18th through April 19th, they have been running consistently at the top of the hour, never at the bottom of the hour. Strange, isn't it? Top of the hour, right? Same key phrase. So let me, let me, let me tell you this. In our, our globe, in our world, in our simulation, the key phrase that's going on is be prepared for anything in our scenario. So if a company like, uh, I don't know, Apple iTunes Power, AEP, who has commercial, they don't normally advertise. If they had an advertisement and they start showing power lines going down and on a screen you see a solar flare hit the earth, but then you also see a volcanism to a great degree, but then you also see winds that knock down the buildings of a city. Then it goes back out and goes to a you know, back to, to the AP symbol. And it says, be prepared for anything. You see that? You say, well, that's odd. Well, then you see one of your water, one of your utilities, local utilities, have a commercial. Say it's a water company. Same thing. You start to see pipes, water pipes superheated in the ground as lava takes them over. Again, you see a computer screen in the background. And they show a solar flare hitting the earth. And then their phrase is, be prepared for anything. And then you see it again with your gas company. They do that same thing and they say, be prepared for anything. And you see a Hershey's commercial. Hershey's, of all things. And they're showing what? Powdered milk. Hershey's. When's the last time Hershey's had powdered milk? And so they say, be prepared for anything. And you start seeing this, something is uh, happening. So as of in our world, you know, in our simulation, uh, April 7, uh, 18th and 19th, those commercials have been happening. Be prepared for anything. On the internet, you know when you get those ads that flash, you can never see them again. For example, on YouTube, you play a video right? and it inserts an advertisement on Hulu or something like that. Same thing. And what do they say? Be prepared for anything. All well, of them have the same things in common. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you say, well, something is weird with that? Now what you would say, well, let's take our globe. Let's take it all over the place. Let's just say that our globe is a real world. And let's say you confirm that message. What is your next step? And what does that actually mean? It means exactly what it's saying. Be prepared for anything with an emphasis on some very bad and uncontrollable solar activity. It also showed people rioting. And it showed magma overtaking pipes in the ground. High wind. Anytime you see a storm element, that is an uncontrollable element. Anytime they show it. In the real world, you have groups. Anybody who's ever had training at the farm, they know this. Communications often come through media, especially when you're in a foreign territory. That's how it'll come. So that you can have access to key phrases at any given moment. So you can be informed regardless of radio communications. So you can walk down a street right and and see something and you're duly informed you do realize there's a time element on this that means there's a high expectation once the message goes out it'll never go out again a week after the first one goes out it'll never go out again never the instructions come after that how do they come well first the key phrases come through for the most part through newspapers through articles things like that uh, television commercials. The instructions will come by way of some weird movie that's released. Now the movie has to be an international movie. That's all it comes. You don't think Hollywood would just front that money, give that money away to producers to make a movie for, you know, just because the movie's good, do you? No, they have, uh, points that they have to, they have objectives they have to meet with every movie. And they can insert anything and everything they want to. So let's liken that to the real world. A notification is pretty heavy. Be prepared for anything. And, and if you're listening to me, it is April 19, 2024. You've been duly notified of that, of what they're doing. Be prepared for anything. And because they're making this statement, this key phrase going out, you can call it whatever you want to. You might want to remember this date. It will remember you. That means you're going to see a lot of, you're going to see hefty changes in activity. This is more of a directive than anything else. It's almost like it's not optional anymore. Time is up. This is them. Now, with these key phrases, they're not sent out 
by somebody who believes in Christ. No, that's not what we were sent out by. Sent out by these people who control a lot of money, not Christians. No. These are people who, they mean business. They are the world. I mean, they're saying that with no clarification of what the actual advantage save emphasis on a giant solar flare that engulfs the earth, uh, then that means they are aware of something and they will act on it. Now you've been informed. Now what do I feel about all that? Here's what I feel. I feel they know exactly what they're doing. I feel in a real world scenario, they have an understanding. That means they're about to let go of something. You may not know this, but the peace that you now experience is a product of them holding on to things, holding systems in place. Once they let go, see, and this is where the Lord comes in and how grateful I am, right? I used to complain about corporations and this this business and that thing over there and this thing over there until the Lord straightened me out on all that. I began to look at the people and I wouldn't want their jobs. We utilize the end result of all the jobs they have. So in that respect, I'm thankful they have that job. They're providing a service for the people. They make things convenient, so thank God for that. But it was never promised to last. It's kind of like a guy who's, who's working on power lines. He's cursing the whole time, but he's still working on the power lines. Same time scenario. So even at its worst time in history, they have their hands on things or holding things together. Why? Because their people are embedded among you, among the populace, and they take care of one another. So long as they are here, so long as they are selfish, so long as they are, are around like that, they're going to try and preserve their own life. And what that means is they're going to continue to take care of things in the world. When you see a message come out like that, they're ready to let go, to take their hands off of it even further than what it is. If they let go, they stop regulating or providing things for their own kind. It's not going to work for anybody else either. You guys understand that? You guys see that? If they stop, if they let go, if they no longer have an interest in maintaining, say, for example, grocery stores, that's going to make it hard on everybody. Whether we complain or not about it, they provide genuine services for all of us. When they decide to let go of whatever they're going to let go of, it's going to make it difficult for everybody. The question is, what are they going to let go of? I don't think it's going to be grocery stores. I don't think it's going to be the power grid. Personally, I think that they have, they're about to confront something they have no control over. I think that was a message, a note, a note to anybody who would hear it, to get themselves prepared, to make sure that they are prepared. For the first time, a somewhat of an international key phrase went out to everybody. And you have to prepare yourselves for any scenario. I have an idea of what they're trying to focus on. I have an idea of that. And, and oh, by the way, you guys will see, those of you who watch news from time to time, you will see it. You turn on a news channel, I'm telling you right now, they're going to insert those commercials on that news channel. You will see it. You're going to hear it with your ears. It's going to be part of their advertising line, right? Be prepared for anything. Then they'll turn around and say, that's what we do, you know. We're prepared for anything. They'll start to notice that. That was just to make you guys aware of something immediate. Take a look at the world, you all. And, and please, don't get fearful. Don't get fearful or have anxieties about what's happening. If you believe in the Word of God, then you believe in prophecy. And in prophecy, just in case it's not clear, many people look for a specific day to come. They call it the rapture. In the Bible, it says, that day will not come. Unless there come a falling away first, and that matter of perdition be revealed. That day's not coming before. Both the matter of perdition is revealed and a falling away will take place. When that happens, then the Lord's return will take place. But the Lord has assured us that day will not come. Lest there come a falling away first or a falling away first and that matter of perdition be revealed. That matter of perdition being the Antichrist, man of doom. So nobody really goes anywhere, not 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 when we're speaking of the the rapture, right? In the Bible, nobody goes anywhere until the beast is revealed, until the falling away happens. So God is giving us a season of expectation. Now, but keep in mind, our father said no man is promised tomorrow. So what does that mean? That means every few minutes, somebody is going home to the father. Try not to get caught up 
and argue and fight over a time that you may not experience. Try not to do that. There are billions of people that came before you. No doubt they believed in, 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 in the rapture too, but they did not go. They didn't go. For those who are alive at that time who read that revelation, this world is going to look ugly during that time. And for those who are alive in that time, they will go. But that time is going to be ugly. That it is very specific about that time. And just in case you're wondering, I never use that term rapture because I'm, I'm not serving the Lord to escape anything. This is our father's world. This is our father's reality. I don't have to escape anything. In the Bible, it says nothing can happen to his children unless he approves it anyway. Nothing can exist without him. So I need not escape anything. The Bible says God provides a way of escape. But do you know what? People have taken that out of context. When he said he provides a way of escape, he was talking about sin for those who are stuck in a sinful situation. He'll provide a way of escape if you're stuck in a sinful situation. In another part of the Bible, it says, Pray that you're worthy to escape all these things and stand before the Son of Man. So you can't cut that in half either. You can't say, Pray that you're worthy to escape all these things and that's all you say nope because that's incomplete pray that you're worthy to escape all these things and to stand before the son of man does anybody know what qualifications you have to have to stand before the son of man how many are so confident right now that if you died you know you're going to heaven how many are so confident right now that if you died you know for a fact you're going to heaven let me share this with you about me i have a hope and I strive every day not to go to heaven, but to be pleasing unto the Lord. It is 100% in the Lord's hands where I end up. I do my best. I am not serving the Lord to get to heaven because I found something out. To be worthy to stand before the Son of Man is to be one of those who is not interested in saving your own skin. In the word it says those who seek to save their lives are going to lose it. That means we have a problem. See, to stand before the Son of Man is to have finished the work here on this earth. Many people right now are looking to get out of here early. Their works are incomplete. See, here's the issue. We don't know the totality of the works we have been assigned. We discover that. But you have people who think they know what the list is. They're saying, well, what I did is good enough. Take me right now. I'm ready. I'm not that person. See, when I have fulfilled all of what I have to do, I will not be here on this earth. As it turns out, when you're finished, you're gone from this earth anyway. So that means if you're still here, you're not finished. And if you're not finished, how can you stand before the Son of Man? So that works. The Lord knows what he's doing. So here's what I'm saying. Is there a rapture moment where people are called up? Of course there is. Don't get hung up on it. And, and because some people live their lives each and every day for the rapture. And they are as mad as a hornet at everybody else. So be careful with that. Because all too often the words of the Most High can get twisted, cause people to be bitter. And all they do is end up ruining people's names. Somebody asked me one time, they said, well, Mike, he doesn't believe in the rapture. Mike, do you believe in the rapture? I said, no, I believe in Christ. I'm not serving the rapture. I'm serving Christ. Why would I believe in the rapture? I believe in scripture, which is Christ. I'm not caught up on the one thing and then get angry at everybody else because they don't. What if the Lord was like that to us? How many times do we not believe in something and then later on in life we say, oh, that is, oh, Lord, forgive me. What if the Lord was like us? Well, if you don't get it perfect this day, you're toast. He's not like that. Everybody's at a different level. God knows the whole truth. We do not. We can discover the truth. We don't know the whole truth. You can know the one that's bound in all truth, but you don't know the whole truth. Am I against those who believe in the rapture? Absolutely not. Because all of us, all of us have prayed for the Lord's help to get out of something. I have nothing against anybody who believes in the rapture. I do have a problem with those who would take the word of God and cause it to be a weapon against a union that the Lord died for, which is the reconciliation of the saints unto the Father, that people would use his word to turn it into a vice and cause people to have bitterness within them. I'm against that. That's a weapon of Satan. Satan knows the word of God better than we do. Are people going to get called away? You better believe it. Read the book of Daniel, chapter 12. Read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Read the whole Bible. You're going to find it in there. At the last trump, those who are alive on this earth are going to be caught up in the air. It also exists in 130 other prophecies outside the Bible. Did you know that? What exists 
that will take place. But 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 why do I never talk about the rapture? Because I'm concerned about today. The Lord said, take no thought of tomorrow, for today holds enough trouble for itself. That's why. And you know what's happening today? A declaration has been made. A declaration that deeply concerns me. Because I'll say it again. Those same powers that run these corporations are ready to take their hands off governing what they have built. That means they're giving up something. I'm, I'm not telling you what I'm suspecting. I'm telling you what I know. I've seen this before on a smaller scale, not on this scale. They're going to take their hands off something. They're going to let something go. When they let it go, it's going to go kapoof. Everybody's not going to know what it is. But the Lord has put certain people in certain positions. They've held certain jobs. They have certain disciplines with the understanding of certain things. Like the other night, somebody wrote me a letter and said, Hey, this, uh, I'm not going to mention the email, but they said, Hey, this guy called New York Prepper is saying that the, those are nuclear codes. I had to really write the person back and say, Listen, listen. If a person is not against you, let them go. They're doing everything they can do for the sake of the people. You guys may say, well, what if they're looking for compensation? Well, how do you think they're going to continue to warn the people? When the Lord gives you a task, believer or non-believer, when the Lord gives you a task, you burn with it internally. And when you burn with something like that, you're going to do everything you can to do what the Lord put in you. If we would stop looking for perfection from people and turn our eyes back to the Most High, we would have an understanding. We would know that when God assigns somebody something, they put out critical information. No one person knows every area, but we know how to hear things. Let those who do what they do, do what they do. Learn to utilize all these things around you, all these people God put in your path. You think he made a mistake? God does not make a mistake. I remember a lot of people wanted me to hate BP Earthwatch. They did. They want me to not like them. I'm not doing that. How can I do that? And they gave their side of the story. You know what I said? I said, well, you obviously, you don't know me. Because if you knew the whole me, you tell me to hate myself. God puts things in people, they burn with a passion. Start looking for the born-again Christian inside of someone and stop looking at the flesh. All of us have messed up. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God. Jimmy Crack Corn, that happened to all of us. Learn to utilize what the Lord put around you. He put everything in place so that not one of you would go without that critical knowledge you need. It is good to be aware of your surroundings. Don't put your head in the sand. Don't turn away and say, well, you know, if I don't look at it, it's not going to get me. That doesn't work in the real world. What you don't know can take you out. Be thankful instead of critical. What did the Lord say? You remember they went to Jesus. They said, hey, Lord, they're casting out demons in your name. They're not part of us. What did the Lord say? Now, this is Jesus talking. And there were people right beside him. Right? There, there were people just doing everything he did, but they were not doing it by his authorization and what did he say let me paraphrase it for you if they're not working against us and the work they're doing is for us that was my paraphrase so let me give it to you in common terms when a person is out there doing something right say say a person without authorization goes and casts out a demon but you don't you you don't like them because they're not authorized they're not working directly against you so have an understanding of this you're a human being they're going to have their viewpoint of every person. They may not like you as an individual, but they desire to do the work of the Lord. And you know what? Anybody who knows Christ, that's why I told you. Remember, I told you guys never defend me. Remember that? Don't defend me from people out there. I told you why. I told you why. When you first meet a person, you're going to be skeptical. Christians are the most skeptical people you can ever meet. They're not going to automatically give you a pass. They're going to listen to everything you say. They're going to know every flaw that you have. They're going to scrutinize. They're going to have a checklist and everything else, and they may not like you. Based on certain merits you may or may not have. That does not mean they're the devil. It just means they don't like you that much. But see, you have to have this understanding. If they know who Jesus is, they're being raised just like you. The Lord will grow you beyond the flesh. When you're beyond the flesh, nothing of the flesh will separate you anymore. Do you hear me? So who cares if a person doesn't like you face to face on the onset? If they're serving Christ, pray for them. Do whatever you can for them. Have this understanding that if they're serving the Lord, if they love the Lord, then he is the physician on them and they will be okay. They're going to be okay in the end. See, I have that consolation. So I can love those who hate me because of that. Because I know that when the Lord begins to work, he's going to do a perfect work. Doesn't matter if they like me or not. There are times I don't like myself. And honestly, if I didn't know myself and heard myself on the Internet, I would warn everybody, don't listen to people on the Internet. 
the guys of football. I know people get mad at me because their tricks don't work again. They try to get me to turn against everybody. I'm not doing that. I have a genuine, listen to me, a genuine instinct about people. An intuition that does not come from flesh. It allows me to see beyond the flesh whether anybody believes that or not. God has put certain people in place, and if you open your ears to stop listening for offenses, because listen to me, whatever you're looking for in a person you're going to find, that's with your family too. Whatever you're looking for in your children, you're going to find. Whatever you're looking for in your friends and your spouse, you're going to find. If you're looking for flaws, you're going to find them all the time. You're going to be one of those upset, bitter people where everybody is wrong, and you're the last one that's left that's right. I tend to look for that little spark. That's right. I could care less about what the flesh did. Your Father in Heaven is willing to overlook everything you ever did in unrighteousness. Isn't that awesome? He is not interested in the deeds of your flesh. He's interested in the growth of your spirit. Do you know that? That's why He sent His Son, so I can say that boldly. He is not interested in what you messed up. He's not interested in the sin that you committed willfully or unwillfully. He's not, he's not interested in that. He's interested in you growing beyond your flesh. He's interested in you being a true family member. He's interested in you overcoming all things. He is not interested in your flesh. And if we are his children, wouldn't we have a mindset like the Most High? The Bible says, as the mother, so is the daughter. As the parent is, so are the children. Just giving you some small advice. We're going into a real trying time. No one has ever gone through the threshold we just crossed. What you're in right now is a first time season that has never been on the face of the earth. This is the only time Ecclesiastes does not qualify. You know what the Lord said? There was no other time like it before to that day or will be after. He mentioned an army. He said there was nobody like them before to that time or would be after. He mentioned a trouble. He said there was no trouble on the earth before to that day or after that was compared to that trouble. So we're going through things for the first time. No one has ever gone through them before. Those who lived in the time of the flood, it's worse than that. Those who lived in the time of Egypt, it is worse than that. It's not comparable to any of those times. The only comparison that we have that was given is man will be just as corrupt and things on the earth will be just as corrupt as they were in the days of Noah. That's the only comparison. Other than that, there is no comparison. And we just went right through that threshold. Let me share this with you guys. Everybody, all you guys have heard that term witchcraft, right? In passing or direct study, many of you know what that witchcraft is. Many of you do. In witchcraft, in those who conjure up demons and work with demons here on this earth, they have a certain procedure for actually raising or allowing demons to enter into a city, to enter into a place. I'm going to share that process with you. I think you need to know because it keeps happening. And every time it happens, it never fails. The outcome is always the same. Always the same. You guys who believe in Christ, you're the only ones who can do anything about it. You cannot convince a person to turn away from that. Let me continue. The first thing they do besides having their ceremonies is they declare vessels in that city of people that don't know they have been declared. Now, what I mean by that is they use people who clearly have issues, who are distressed, and then they have this dark prayer over that person. For example, if there's an alcoholic on the street, they will actually identify that alcoholic, and they will start doing this negative prayer over the alcoholic. All They, they do this together in their little covens they have all over the world, and they pray over that one vessel. Now, this the first when they start praying over these vessels, People go miss it. The purpose is to have that person begin to act by way of those demonic entities. They do a lot of nasty stuff in between. But then the last step is to have one of those people go and set themselves on fire. Doesn't matter what the reason is. They go and set themselves on fire, which seals whatever incantation they were using. It's this dark stuff that happens all around you. Now, if you're here in COT, you've heard this before. You've watched the outcome a few times. Remember Egypt? Remember Iraq? Syria? You remember that? The outcome is always the same. Always the same. And here in New York City, you guys have the gist of what has happened here. Now, what? how do we even know? How would anybody know if that were valid or not? Well, that's not the point. 
is not the point that if something is valid or not. You can take that under consideration, but the entire purpose is to wreak havoc in a specific area. Now, I do find it odd that somebody of whom half the country trusts, somebody is in court at the same time somebody burns themselves, as, as though somebody is trying to maximize darkness over the whole thing. This is where you come in. This is where you will make that difference. I can assure you of this. I say this by the Spirit. You're going to get an example of what happens when you don't intercede. You must never forget the main objective of the fight. You're fighting for your fellow man, not against. Always distinguish that in your life. Always. Don't allow the enemy to cause you to target somebody else. Now, it doesn't matter whether you like Trump or not. He's a human being. Human beings are vessels of spirits. Whether it be the spirit, the Holy Spirit, or some other spirit, we're vessels of the spirit. But we know that Christ died for us. Christ died for everything that we would ever do wrong. Christ died. You must never forget that. You can look upon a person with accusation all day. I can't do that. I stand before you guilty. I sin. But Christ died. Because I'm, a, because I'm acquainted with my own sin, with my own history, with all the things I've done. You'll never see me point my finger at somebody else. I'm the worst person I know. Nobody else outside of me is worse than me. So when it comes to other vessels, I tend to fight for them. Even when nobody else will, I'll fight for them. You come in because I'm not the only one that has that ability and the anointing to accomplish that fight. To let you know that this is just not whistling dipsy. Track the crime rate in New York starting right now. That's all you have to do. Watch what happens so that you understand that these people who do these dark things are quite serious about what they do. So that you will, beyond a shadow of a doubt, have an understanding something dark is taking place there. But somebody is trying to maximize harm upon humanity, period. And if we're going to fight, then let's fight the good fight of faith. I'm going to let you guys know the real. Here, here it is right here. If you think I'm going to pray for one specific person, you're wrong. I'm not doing that. I don't pick and choose a vessel to pray for and leave everybody else to the wolves. I don't do that. Because of what happened. That whole area is under a cloak of a type of darkness. If that's not evident to any of you now, then start tracking the crime rate starting tonight. And watch what happens. And look at the nature of the crimes starting tonight in that area and watch what happens just in case you have any doubts that these people whoever initiated this craft just in case you don't believe it it'll add some credence to it a little bit the nature of the crimes are going to change my sincere prayer is that our father's presence and his will be positioned in that place before it's too late you already know they dedicated New York to ball you know that. You know that underneath that city in four locations, there are statues. They mark the territories of all. And then plants. Or Bali, or whatever you want to call them. I'm not for that. That means a lot of people are in trouble there and they don't know it. Baphomet has been there from the beginning of New York City. You guys know that. It's been there underneath the city. There are multiple temples underneath the city. Gathering places and meeting places. For people who wear strange attire. It's in that city. Now that they have succeeded in doing what most people only know happening in the Middle East. You guys know what happened when the guy set himself on fire in the Middle East. You guys know what happened in the Middle East a few times. You know what happened in Egypt, Yemen. You do. You guys know what happened in various places of the Middle East with Gaddafi. You remember him? ISIS. You remember that? The egregious crimes that they're accused of that they did. That spread like wildfire to the point where women, women with heavy hearts, killed their own children to spare them from suffering at the hands of ISIS. That should have sickened the entire earth, but it didn't. They reported on that story multiple times, and it's as though nobody heard it, because Christians did not cry out against that. But sometimes we can get so captivated in survival that we can only see our own needs. There's so many things happening around the world, but the nature of everything that's happening around the world is about to change. And if you think this is, this is the second burning in the USA, 
the second time a person has set themselves on fire in the USA. You think it'll be the last? Nope. What if somebody does this in every city, but they don't do it in the other places, just the cities? Will that change your mind? And if you knew it was true, 100% true, what would be your next step? You know what the truth is? When it comes to prayer, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not praying that my desire for someone come true. I don't pray that way because I don't have the answer. Let me give you an example of that. I'm just sharing this with you. I'm not, if, if somebody in here was sick, I am not going to pray that God remove whatever you said was sick. That will not be my prayer because I don't know what it takes to fix you. Sometimes, even in prayer, we think we know it all. Even in prayer, we think we know what's going to fix somebody. What's going to solve a situation? You know why I'm saying this? So that you regard the nature of your own prayers so that they're not routine. Because your prayers are powerful. Satan knows this. Satan knows what happens when you pray for real. Satan knows it. But suppose I pray and I pray for God to do my will. And what I'm telling you is this, that here in this country, we have a bad habit of praying that God do what we want him to do. Wouldn't you guys agree? Think about it for a moment. Don't we have that issue? We often pray that God will do what we desire for him to do. As though we know what's going to fix a problem. And so we just pray that God do our will. I do not pray like that. I don't pray like that. Just consider it. I see, because once you bring something like this up and somebody considers it, somebody's going to actually apply it. And when they apply it, when they apply that God's will be done in a specific situation, and they're on standby, waiting to be sent to assist if the Lord sends them, or they just pray for, they'll receive instruction all the way, and things will happen. God chooses to work through you. Do you hear me? He chooses to work through you. He can do it all himself. He does not need us. But he chooses to work in us. We are the body and the earth. He chooses to work through us. And if we're willing, we can be a part of it. Who knows we need it. Stay sober also, knowing that a kingdom is going to rise in the earth. It will be, be given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. It's going to happen. Some prophecy. Don't live your life according to that type of doom, though. No. Because even when that kingdom rises, so will you. As darkness rises in the earth, so will the Holy Spirit within all the vessels that obey the Lord. All those who choose to obey the Lord. The Holy Spirit will rise in power within you. It will always be in balance. If there's one thing that's happening in your life that you should be a witness of, is that everything happens in balance. God is a just God. He presents to all of us in equal measure light and darkness. He does not sway us to one side or the other, but He clearly lets us see what both are. Upon the introduction of darkness and light, you have a choice to make. In your troubles, examine them. Quickly, and what do you see? That when you're in a trial, you have a choice. You have a choice to commit yourself to doing it the holy way or the unholy way. Now, somebody tell me they don't struggle with that. As soon as you're in the midst of your trial, here come the voices. Here come the memories. Well, do it this way. See, if you do it the crooked way, there's always that voice. That, you know, it's kind of a promise that you can get it out of the way and face the consequences later. If you do it the holy way, it is going to have embarrassment attached to it and everything else. That's what the voices say. You're given that choice. Be a witness to that. At some point, you're going to make the right one. For those of you who have not recognized that yet, once you do, you're going to make that right choice. And when you do, your whole life will change. Once you do something according to the Lord with this attitude. Now, listen, I'm not talking about doing something according to righteousness. And then two days later, you say, well, I should have just did the other way. I'm not talking about that. There's no committal in that. I'm talking about those who would do something the holy way. And it looks like all H-E double hockey sticks breaks loose in their life. But they stay committed to the holy way. Those who do that. They're going to know what God's deliverance is. And you know what happens to a person who has experienced the deliverance of the Most High? I'll tell you what happens. Nobody can break their faith. Do you know why? Because from that day forward, they will know that God will deliver them. Now, having said that, you know your life is set up, right? Your life is set up that you will experience the deliverance of the Lord. Just in case you've been wondering why you keep having these issues over and over again. So that you can be delivered by the Most High. If the Lord delivers you. Do you think he wants you telling everybody that your friend delivered you? 
that there's a scientific explanation? No, he wants you to be a true witness to him for your soul's sake. See, because if you don't know his deliverance, you're still, you don't know. How can a person commit and continue to be committed to something they have no idea about? You can't do that. Nobody can. You are to be a witness to the Lord's deliverance in your life. You are to be a witness. And you know what the Lord's been trying to make you a witness? He's been, listen, he's been giving you the opportunity to be that witness. How? He sends trial after trial after trial. How many of you, and it, it, it shouldn't be everybody, but somebody has gotten to the point, right? They went through a trial. And instead of getting out of the trial or praying for a release, they said, Lord, I know you're sending this. Encourage me, but teach me and show me so I can learn in this. And they suffered the trouble, but they did all things holy and were absolutely delivered before they could even realize they were fully delivered and rejoiced at the end. Somebody went through that process. And whoever it is that went through that process, nothing can break their faith right now. They know for a fact that God can deliver. See, those are the people that will not say, well, you know, maybe God will deliver you. Maybe, maybe not. They don't do that. No, they know. They know absolutely. When If everybody else, right, when they're around and they're doubting and they're scoffing and they're pointing, it's not going to bother that person who understands the deliverance of the Most High. Those who are a direct witness of that deliverance, it's not going to bother them. Do you know why? Because they will have experienced God's deliverance. And when everybody else doubts, they're going to have faith. That's who you are in this time coming. Pillars. Solid pillars. Pillars that do not bend. Pillars that do not break. You stand by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord is completing a process in you. You're going to be needed in these days. My goodness, we're here. All of us need to be up to speed. But we can't resist the word of the Lord and expect to be where we should be. Once you are a witness of his deliverance, at that point, Satan can come all day. That's when you can walk through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil, because you're a witness. That's when somebody over here, they're, they're crying, Psalm 90, Psalm, uh, uh, the protection prayer, Psalm 91, but you're saying it, you're declaring it. That's when you're in the middle of combat, and your heart never skips a beat, because you have confidence in the Most High and full trust. All of us need trust in the Most High. All of us do. All of us need trust. Do you not know that the Lord affords us the opportunity for that? He already said He would. And He does that every day of our lives. If we would just pay attention. If we would stop fighting everything that comes. And consider this one thing. That because you believe in Christ, everything in your life is highly purposed. Every person you meet, highly purposed. God will get the glory out of everything that even touches your life or connects with it. You are in fact a vessel. It is impossible for a person to truly believe in Christ unless God gave them to Christ. If you have a belief in Jesus of Nazareth, right now, if you have an honest belief, do you not know that you're given to Christ to be kept, not lost? Do you know that? You have been given to Christ. Please understand that. Because when that foreboding sensation comes, when the massive insecurities come, when people hear that something happened and it's of notable magnitude, people are going to get nervous. And when they get nervous, if you're an example among them, you will help them during that time. You know, for a child, right? A child. If something happens in a home, say it's a storm and the thunder's real loud. If the parents, if, say there's two parents and five children, right? If the parents get nervous during that storm, have you noticed the children have no security? But say both the parents are frightened of thunder and lightning, but for the sake of their children, they stand firm in that storm. You know what happens? The kids get nervous. They immediately look at their parents. And because their parents are solid, they're safe. They're safe because their parents are solid. Because their parents are not whimpering. See, because you may not know this. To a child, that parent is home, not the house, the parent. And wherever that parent goes, it's home to the child. If you lived in a one-bedroom house with the roof falling off, you're still home to your child. Do you know that? Some of you who can remember when you were small, you could feel your parents, couldn't you? You could feel them. 
You could feel your parents. You couldn't articulate what was happening, but you knew when something was wrong. You knew when things were okay. You knew when the house was at peace, and you knew when there was a problem. You could feel your parents. When your parents were okay, you were okay. That's when you cried and whined. That's when you know a child is home. They start telling you about everything wrong. Do you know that? When a child is at home, they will express everything wrong. When they are in a strange place, they hold their tongue. When you guys who are adults, when you go to a strange place for some odd reason, and just so you guys understand this, there are certain natural functions that won't take place. As soon as you get home, somebody flips the switch on those natural functions and they happen. So you do understand that, even in your adult years. You understand that when you go somewhere, biological functions are interrupted. And when you get back home, somebody turns on those biological functions again. Because when you're uncomfortable, it's almost like a shock to your body and mental shock to your mind. Hear me on this. Parents, you are the stability for your children. Those of you who believe in Christ, your relationship with Christ is incredibly important. It is important that you know Christ for who he is, not for who you're trying to make him to be, not for who somebody else is trying to make him to be, but for you to know him for who he is. Time for you to know him directly and not through somebody else's eyes. How do you know Christ directly like that? You've got to endure some things on this earth. When you endure some things, guess what you're collecting? After you endure something, something is added to you. Do you know what that is? Anybody? You know what that is? When you endure a time on this earth, something is added to you. Do you know what that is? Anybody? Oil. That's right. It's called oil. You cannot sell it. You cannot give anybody your oil. You can't even sell it. Anybody who wants your oil, the only thing they can do is go back in life and buy it because it comes at high price. All of what you went through is needful. All of what you're going through is critical. Find your Lord in it. But don't align yourselves with the world. You're not here in this earth to become part of the world and be given over to flesh. God called you out of the world to make a difference in the world. And at this specific time and moment, we need that more than ever. So, you guys know about the burning. I've been giving you my part. It's the best I can give you. Now you have to watch and see the outcome of it. Remember the nature of your prayers. And I hope that you understand that you can really trust the will of God. The will of God is perfect. It absolutely resolves. And it, we should be no strangers that we do not like the process a lot of times. Okay, we, we just don't like the process. Somebody say, Brother White, my neighbor next door screams out loudly regularly and runs out of his flat. I know that it has to do with me, but I'm not doing anything to him. What is going on? But you can't worry about that. Do you guys know about these uh, about these distracting imps? Let me explain this way. All of you should know someone who likes to get into your life and consume your time. All of you know someone like that. In other words, they come into your life, they don't want help, though they whine all the time. They don't want to be fixed, though they're broken all the time. Anybody know somebody like that? When you have people like that in your lives, the real question is, just like just like you, Peter said, what do you do? What, what do you do? Well, the first thing you don't do is you don't become somebody else's savior. Because listen to me, what they'll do is they'll enter into your life and they will solicit you by way of emotions as though they're pleading with you that they want you specifically to lend something to them, to help them out. Right? You can talk to them until you're blue in the face about prayer. They're not going to do it. They're going to come back with the same thing all the time as much as they can. See, in life, sometimes you have to, when you can't handle something, never be afraid to say, hey, I can't handle that. That's the first thing I want to tell you. Don't ever be afraid to say, I cannot handle that. When you cannot handle something, when you don't know what to do for real, never be afraid to say, hey, I have no idea how to fix that, what to do with that. You know, I have no idea. Make that a side note. But in the situation when these people come to you like that, right? Ask them. If you have verbal communication with them, ask them this one question. You ready? If they are a believer and they're like that, then ask them. Well, let's do this first. If you think they're a non-believer, just the average person, then ask them a question. What do you want me to do to help with your problem? That's what you ask them. Normally when you do that, it forces them to go into a different frame of mind because it will pop up in your life from time to time 
if they are a believer in Christ and they keep coming to you with everything they have, the same thing over and over again, it's almost like they're not heeding your advice in prayer or by scripture or anything else, then ask them this, what do you want Jesus to do for you? You go directly to the source with them. Are we on that? Go directly to the source. Why do you do that? Because all too often, all too often, we're creatures of flesh, and your flesh has some pretty bad tendencies. Now, some people just want to talk about an issue, and they're in the habit of doing it. Somehow that habit has to be broken. And everybody they approach with their stories, people listen to them, and then kick them out of their lives. That's not helping them. So you be the one to stop the conversation and say, wait a minute, what would you want Jesus Christ to do for you? Let that be the nature of your conversation. Do you hear me? See, because people have been duped into believing that somehow, if you can talk about every problem you can think of, you're going to be fixed. Wrong. Remember how mad you guys got at me in COT? And you guys said, well, you know, everybody vents and he called it venting. I said, no, venting is murmuring and complaining. And there's no solution in it. Psychologists have told you, well, it's good to talk about your problems. No, it isn't. No, it is not. That does nothing but have you speak about every problem you have for years. It's good that you find a solution to your problems by someone who can actually solve it. And so that's why Christians should say, my friend, what would you want Jesus Christ to do for you? What do you want the Lord to do? And should they make a request, say, hey, we can pray for that. We can pray for that. If you would like me, always ask. But see, if you'd like me to, I'll pray with you on that on that subject. The reason why you do that, right, is you're stopping these other spirits from utilizing this person's vulnerabilities and tying up your time. Because you're the uh, target here. They want to tie you up on purpose. And they will use heartstrings to do it. Normally, these people come around when you have an issue you've got to figure out. And they come around to distract from your time, to take your mind off of solutions you would have, to interrupt your times of, 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 of true meditation with the Lord. That's what they come around for. And you've got to nip that in the bud. So then, without being that individual that they can speak everything to, because they will pull on your heartstrings, then you look them right in the eye and say, what would you like Jesus Christ to do for you? That's if they believe in Christ. If they don't believe in Christ, then you look them straight in the eye and say, what can I do for you? And if they go back talking about somebody else, say, no, what can I do for you? Not anybody else, me. What can I do for you? If they answer, then you tell them, if some, suppose you went to a person who is a secular person, they don't believe in the Lord, and you say, well, what can I do for you? And they, first of all, they're not really going to answer that. So you got to bring them back to that point. When you do that, that's very direct. A lot of cases, they'll go find somebody else to vent to. In the majority of the cases, they're going to pause. Because you just made them think about their own lives and what's broken. If they start pouring out, you got to let them know. We together can go to the Father for this. You tell them the truth. I can't fix you. We can ask the Lord together. I tell people all the time, I cannot solve your problems. I just tell them right up front, I, I can't solve your problems, but I can pray with you if you do that. But me, myself, I can't solve your problems. I can give a person all the advice in the world. That's not solving a problem. When you do that, you nip that in the bud. If you don't do that, they'll come back with the same issue over and over and over again. Now, here's what's really happening. When they continue to come back to you with the same issue, spirits are manipulating them to get to you. They're wearing you out. And they're wearing them out. And they do it on purpose. Trying to break some of those habits. That's almost like a person who's always talking about medication. Every time you see them, they're talking about medication. That's a new thing. As of what? 1994. People are always talking about medication and what's broken. You gotta nip that in the bud. So I have a decent conversation with you, it'll always go back to medication and what's wrong with them. And if you entertain that, you're gonna be that, that trash can that's gonna hold everything they dish out. And nip that in the bud. They're looking for someone to compliment or to say it's okay for them to be in the state they're in. If you become complicit, you also become guilty. If you entertain that, you become guilty. When you entertain something holding your tongue, you're not saying anything, you become guilty. Because now you're supporting something they shouldn't be doing at all. It's just venting and gossip and tail bearing and all sorts of things. All of you already know this. I'm just reminding you as a brother in Christ. That's all. Yep. I was just going to cover that subject and somebody put breaking. The Middle East. Well, the Middle East. The situation in the Middle East is going to continue. 
This is my opinion. I can only give you my opinion, okay? I can only give you my opinion. I want you guys to understand that. I can only give you my opinion. My opinion can be absolutely wrong. If I give you anything the Lord gave me, I will tell you that. I'll tell you the Lord gave me something. But the Lord didn't give me this. This is my opinion. Because I'm always saying things in a certain way. So please understand that. I give you my opinion as a general layout of a development so that you have a, a bit of insight into the progressive state of what's happening. Because the target in the Middle East is Israel. And it's also the United States of America. And there is a spiritual mindset that will do anything it has to do to get rid of both. So the U.S. and Israel cannot be separated in this case. Just in case you don't know, we are known to the Islamic world as Big Satan. That's what they call us, Big Satan. Now, before you start hating the Islamic world, please, please, with understanding and wisdom, realize that people of various places are raised in various cultures. And in their home environment, they're taught certain things. Or in this case, by oppression, they accept certain things. So they themselves are not ousted. In their religion, they believe that the USA is a Dajjal, a devil. They have these old books that are compliments to their Quran and their different ones. Now, some say we're the Dajjal, some say we're Satan, this, that, and the other, right? So their general sentiment towards us concerning their faith is that we are corrupted. They don't like Israel because they say Israel does not have the proper birthright to have that land. This goes back to an ancient struggle between two children. That's what they believe. They act on that. You know, that's, that's what they're going to act on. That means when it comes to making peace with what they see as the devil, it's not going to happen. That's what I want you to see. It's not going to happen. Those of them who are radicals for their faith will never, they're not going to shake hands with the devil. They will use the devil. They're even told to do that, to utilize their enemy, the devil, to lie, cheat, steal, do whatever, to manipulate the devil which they think is the USA to do anything they have to do to destroy it. Now, let me give you the insights. When it comes to Israel, Israel understands. They have an understanding that if they don't act, they're going to be gone. This is what is in their minds. This is why they're doing what they do. If they don't attack, they're going to be gone. Now, granted, there are some that are simply bloodthirsty. Among the bunch, they're angry. They're mad. Their hearts are broken from... Just years, decades of fighting, putting up with things, being ousted from certain areas. They're going to protect Israel tooth and nail if they have to preempt. Right? Because we have talked them down four times. Do you not know that Israel, on average, is talked out of doing certain things militarily at least twice a month? Do you know that? Those of you who are in the first Gulf War and the continuing uh, Middle Eastern conflicts, you understand that during the evening hours when those radio calls came out, when the alarms went off for missiles in the air, you understand by radio calls that, that many had to talk Israel down. You understand what Israel was saying with those missiles. They made a declaration, and in fact, in 1990, it was so bad one night that a nuclear war, just we were seconds away from a nuclear war. We were seconds away. It happened again in the Gulf War. So the first one was Operation Desert Storm. The second one was in the Persian Gulf, the Persian Gulf War. Not too long ago, same thing happened. With these hostilities that are taking place now, this back and forth thing, it's going to do nothing but escalate. I want you to see that. But grimly, it's also going to forge a friendship with those of the Islamic world. As the Bible says, all those who have indignation against the Holy Covenant are going to come against Israel. And it's so ironic that this happens at the time of the dedication of the Red Dragon. We're talking about royalty. You know, the Queen, the King, Prince Harry and fellows, all those things. That's where the Red Dragon is committed to his works. That's where a religious figure bows at the feet of whoever's appointed to be the Red Dragon. And they kiss the hem of the robe of the Red Dragon. And they pledge their servitude to it. Period. That's the only time the Vatican is empowered yet again by the Red Dragon. If you're Catholic, don't take offense to that. People have rituals. Right? 
They may or may not have some type of power behind it. This is just what they do. But don't worry. You live in a time where the Lord said all things that are done in the darkness are going to be brought to the light. That's very important. The Lord's going to do this, right? And he'll destroy anything unclean in our hands, not for our destruction. He's not going to do it so that we die. He's going to do it so that we will not believe in falsehoods. He made a promise he would do that. So if, say, for example, you believed that somebody was a certain way. The Lord's going to show you the truth about that. Suppose you believe in a certain interpretation in the Word of God, well, that interpretation is going to fail. That will deliver that person from believing in the Bible in a specific way. This argument over the rapture or non-rapture, all that's going to go away. And people will not sit and argue and fight over something they cannot control. They'll stop doing that. The world will be so iniquitous at that time that when everybody comes out of the closet, nobody's going to care. A person's going to walk nude down the street. Lewd acts will be performed where children can see it. It's what the world is turning into. It is about to be legal to be topless in many, many countries. For a female to be topless, just like a man. As I've said so many times here on COT, they're changing the concepts of mankind. How man thinks is different today than it was 20 years ago. It's very different. There are laws that will be passed which will legalize this. And nobody can persecute a person for their nudity. Side note. If the law of the land ever permits something that is forbidden by our Father, you are not guilty, not keeping that said law. One of the disciples was posed with this same thing. He was an apostle at that time. And he explained to the people, he said, am I to obey man or God? Because they said, hey, don't you go out there preaching in the name of Jesus ever again. And at that point, it, I mean, it was bad. They would kill you for that. But then the, that bold apostle stood and said, Am I to obey God or man? And he made a decision. And the same day they told him, Don't you go out there and preach. They just, they just were released from prison. And they said, Do not go out there preaching in the name of Jesus. But the same day they were out there preaching in the name of Jesus. Because they obeyed the living God. As a side note, when the apostle prayed for boldness, he did not pray for boldness so he could say what he wanted to say. No. If you read that whole thing, he prayed for boldness. That all those threats would not alter the word of God in him. See, when you're, when you're talking about the living God and somebody has threatened you, if you don't have boldness, you're going to alter the word of God so that you do not offend the one who threatened you. Say, for example, if Mike from around the world had a standing threat, that if he were to... You know, say certain things or declare certain things in the name of Christ. That's breaking international law and certain conventions, and that's jail time. So who do you obey in that case? Do you obey the living God, or do you obey man's stuff? It takes boldness to continue in that, knowing what they're going to do, right? It takes the boldness. That's what the apostle prayed for. He did not want the word of God compromised inside of him. He did not pray for boldness so he can get his points out. That's not what he did. He prayed for boldness that the Holy Spirit, that the word of the Holy Spirit would not be altered coming out of his mouth. That's what he prayed for boldness for. That he may speak what the Holy Spirit gives him without altering anything. See how that is? I'm making that side note because I, I bought that point up, yes. But a lot of people had that totally wrong. They thought or they were using that as an excuse to tell people what they wanted people to hear. That's not why the apostle prayed for boldness. Because they had to preach under threat of death. Who in this world, right, if crucifixion was legal and the U.S. government said if you preach in the name of Jesus you will be crucified, who would preach? You'd find out then who had the word of God in them. You'd find out then who had faith, right? You find out then, because many would fold. I'm telling you this because a wolf is coming. And the wolf mentioned in the word of God is not after the sheep. It's after the hireling. A hireling is somebody who does what they do for money. So some of these, any pastor out there doing what they do for money, the wolf is coming and they will not escape. It's coming for them. And God says when the wolf comes and that shepherd is gone, the sheep are going to be scattered. But that's what you're here for. How many of you have had dreams that you were helping people out in a very 
just distasteful time, but you were helping people. How many had that dream? God showed you that dream of you helping people in a time of distress. And it looked like the end of whatever town you were in. But you were helping people in their in their time of distress. Or it's revealing something. He is revealing something big. And if you've not had that dream, don't worry about it. Because just about everybody around you has. Don't worry about it if you have not had that dream. Be thankful for that too. You're not burdened with that. But at some point, you will have something to do. We're not here on this earth to pass away the time. We're not here to say, I'm okay, forget about everybody else. I mean, maintain my position. No, that's not why we're here. There's a trial, a testing of your faith, a trying of your faith just about every day to see if you will, with integrity, keep that way of faith. Once you take note of that, you begin to see it. Hopefully it helps out your decision too, because sometimes you don't know. Back to the Middle East. The sentiment in the Middle East is turning vicious. It will carry on to neighboring countries. People have increased their police strength. They are in fact ready. And God, because God always prepares those of whom he calls. For example, do you guys know what happens with a judge when you're involved? Do you know what happens to a courtroom when you are involved? You, the believer in Christ, do you know what happens? The Lord will, on your behalf, Touch the heart of that judge just for you, not for everybody else, for you. Do you know that? Do you know that's written in the word of God? Which is why he said, submit yourselves to earthly authority. That's what was given by the Holy Spirit. Because the Lord will intervene when it comes to you. He will avenge you through such vessels. He does. At least, we all know what it will eventually become. Take note that the USA is being probed. Everything is being looked at. Many of you have noticed quirky activity from your devices. How do you? Strange tones on phone calls. This, that, and the other. Certain screens. Your phone will go. It, it keeps going to without you pressing any buttons. It'll start up an app all on its own. Those things are happening. I hope that as you guys are aware of this, right? Of, of these little quirky things that they're trying to do. That you won't lose your sensibility about yourselves. We're going to have communication for a while. We're going to have sporadic electricity for a while, but something is going to happen to the fuel. You guys that are dusty and crusty here at COT, you know that. That was given to me, right, a long time ago. And it sounded so crazy a long time ago. It sounds partially crazy now, but it's starting to, uh, you know, grow things just like the stone steps. That sounded ludicrous when I first had it. So I, it is multiple times I had that one. That's why it's a, it's a heavy weight on me. Even this guy set himself on fire. It, it's, it's in there. It's part of that. We're getting closer to a, another time also that America's resolve is going to be tried. Now, it's important that you guys understand this. Despite the choices America makes, you have a choice to make. First of all, Christ came to do what? To destroy the works of Satan. Christ works through you. He will move you to do certain things. And I hope that we are in that position of obedience to do it at that time. I did. It's going to be critical. So do this. Make sure you yourselves do not invite division. And I give you one warning. I give you a warning. I've been dancing around the warning. I have to give this warning. Don't be shocked when I say this, but there are a lot of Christians who think God can't do anything. There are many Christians who believe that Jesus won't do a thing. The Bible, it says, people will say to themselves that God will not do good nor evil. If God won't do good or evil, that means people are losing hope. Because of all the stuff that's happening, Christians are going to lose hope. Listen to me. Because of all the stuff that's happening, this is already prophesied. Christians are going to lose hope. Because it was already said that when a Christian says in their heart that God has abandoned us, my goodness, the event of events will take place. When the believers say God has abandoned us. Now, folks, at what time would a person ever say something like that? I'll make it short. When it looks hopeless. When it looks hopeless. It's kind of like you're, you guys, I know that you've encountered lots of people out there in the world who have certain things a little backward. And you ask yourself, my goodness, these people need the truth, but they're not listening to a thing. That's what's happening.
also in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boastful, proud, blasphemous. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.